time to show Paul just how strong you are! Hey guys, it's Ash here with Watch Mojo, and today we'll be ranking every Pokemon of Ash Ketchum. For this list, we'll be looking at each of Ash's partners over the years, rating them from worst to best. However, we're excluding those that he didn't officially capture, like Raticate or Haunter. Which of Ash's Pokemon is your favorite? Let us know in those comments below. Number 55, Apom. While not without its moments, at the end of the day, this Pokemon is more Dawn's than Ash's. Weasel can't wait for the next gym battle. Yeah. And I can't wait to use Apom in my next contest! Ampha. Number 54, Unpheasant. This forgettable flyer's cardinal sin is that it doesn't do anything that Ash's other regional birds don't do better. Aerial Ace! Ah! <laughs> Number 53, Baldor. Ash's first rock type was a cool addition to the team, but ultimately was overshadowed by the rest of his Unova companions. Baldor Rock Blast! <laughs> Number 52, Swellow. This feisty bird flew all the way to a pretty cool track record, even if it feels like a retread of Ash's other flying types. It's a sky battle between Swellow and Latios! Incredible! Number 51, Scraggy. Despite its potential, Scraggy never really got to do much of anything, and don't even get us started on how many focus blasts it missed. Stop it with focus blasts! Scrag! Scrag! It appears that your luck has just run out. Number 50, Levani. There is something satisfying about watching Ash raise a small bug type into its final form. Unfortunately, the resulting Levani spends more time on the sidelines than off it. You sure are good at making clothes. Benny. Number 49, Noctowl. Admittedly, it's pretty cool that Ash caught a shiny Pokemon. Of course, it would have been cooler if Noctowl actually did anything afterwards. <laughs> Ash, Gastly's just too fast. Noctowl's got to stop it. Number 48, Glalie. It's a real shame that ice types get the short end of the icicle spear. If it had just been given the chance, Glalie could have easily defrosted into one of Ash's strongest partners. Whoa, that looked like a critical hit. Number 47, Gibble. Its Draco Meteor is definitely memorable, but unfortunately, Gibble was caught too late in the Sinnoh arc to get the shine it deserved. But Gibble hasn't mastered Draco Meteor! It works, Gibble! You're the best! Number 46, Corfish. This Hoenn water type has a lot of personality and the bubble beams to back it up, but it's hard to stand out when Ash has got a more iconic crab Pokemon fighting in the wings. Now, bubble beam! <laughs> no, Torkoal! <laughs> Number 45, Palpitoad. It's admirable how much Ash believed in this little guy. In fact, he probably believed in it a bit too much. If I may, you didn't by chance bring just Palpito, did you? <laughs> Number 44, Tauros times 30. Even though their debut episode was never dubbed, Ash's gathering of Tauros made plenty of worthy appearances across the years. Now, Tauros, use horn attack! Look at that incredible power! Tauros is moving like a bulldozer! Number 43, Weasel. In a refreshing reminder of Ash's best qualities, he trained this water type until it could beat its own evolution. Number 42, Donphan. After rolling back onto the scene in the Battle Frontier, Ash's Bamfy evolved and proved it could still dish out some serious damage. All right, let her rip! <laughs> 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 
Number 41, Primeape. This brawler Pokemon was only around for a handful of episodes, but his Mega Kick sure left an impression. Mega Kick right now! Number 40, Oshawott. Ash is practically drowning with iconic water types, but after Oshawott squared off against a mighty high dragon, the Unova star had totally earned its spot among the esteemed lineup. Okay, Hydro Pump! Keep it up, Oshawott! Number 39, Mr. Mime. After a thousand episodes of waiting, there's nothing quite like seeing Ash finally bring Mimey into battle. Mime! Mime! Number 38, Torkoal. This quirky fire type had more heart than it knew what to do with, but rest assured its overheat attack still left some serious burns. Just ask Reggie Steel. Torkoal, use flamethrower! Oh. A direct hit! That was a strong one, too. Number 37, Staraptor. Cool, quick, and effective, this is what all of Ash's regional birds should have been like. What? Star Raptor knows close combat! Number 36, Snivy. With all the sass a trainer could ever want, Snivy was a total scene stealer in Unova. At least when Ash remembered its gender. Hey! Uh, a track didn't work! You're right. By any chance, does your Snivy happen to be a female? Uh, uh, of course! I totally forgot! Number 35, Dracovish. It took 20 years, give or take, but Ash finally got his hands on a fossil Pokemon. If its epic bout with Drasnus Neuvern is anything to go by, it was well worth the wait. <laughs> Number 34, Butterfree. Even if he does eventually catch them all, there's no forgetting Ash's first real capture. There's good reason Butterfree's farewell is still one of the series' most iconic moments. Don't worry. I'll just tell all the other Pokémon that you're on a trip, and you'll come back someday, maybe. <laughs> Number 33, Talonflame. On principle alone, befriending a Firebird was the perfect way to reignite Ash's love for regional flying types. Plus, it fought a freaking Moltres. Number 32, Bayleaf. Outside of maybe Pikachu, Ash may not have a single Pokemon that loves him more than Bayleaf. She proves it too, with some worthwhile showings throughout Johto. That's the way, Bayleaf! Now finish it with Body Slam! <laughs> Number 31, Pig Knight. After some heartfelt bonding with Ash, Tepig lit a fuse to more self-esteem and a satisfying evolution into Pig Knights. Flame charge, let's go! <laughs> Number 30, Muck. No other Mon could have made the Indigo League look this easy. Really, it just goes to show how offensively underutilized Muck's been ever since. We did it, Muck! Uh, <laughs> now I understand how that bell sprout felt. <laughs> Number 29, Quillava. Cyndaquil's return in Sinnoh was a welcome treat. But really, the unexpected evolution was just a victory lap for an already iconic fire type. You evolved and learned eruption too. That's awesome, Quillava. <laughs> 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 Number 28, Melmetal. Alola was a standout saga for Ash, but this charming addition to the team proved it was tough as steel in more ways than one. Good egg, Kaku! Number 27, Neuvern. After its amazing duel with Salamence in the Lumios Conference, it's clear why this dragon type earned a spot on Ash's varsity Kalos team. All right, Dragon Rush, let's go! Use acrobatics! Yeah. 
Number 26. King Lair In its very first fight in the whole series, Krabby evolved and utterly crab hammered the competition. After a showing like that, the only question is why Kingler isn't used more. We actually did it, Kingler! You were unbelievable! Number 25, Gliscor. After a brief training sabbatical, Ash's Gliscor returned as one of his most powerful Sinnoh companions. And that's saying something. Use Firefang! Number 24, Pidgeot. Poke fans may still be waiting for Ash to return for it, but that doesn't take away from how many iconic moments this inaugural flying type brought to the series. We'll be back as soon as we get Professor Oak's Pokeball. <laughs> See you soon, Pidgeot! Number 23, Totodile. You'd be hard-pressed to find any of Ash's Pokemon that can chew up an opponent, do a victory dance, and still look this innocent. Yeah, Totodile! <laughs> Number 22, Naganadel. Despite Ash's embarrassing knowledge of type matchups, this toxic Ultra Beast was a near-unforgettable addition to an already legendary lineup. You Thunderbolt! Number 21, Crocodile. Ash's Unova ground type is pretty much his unofficial ace of the region. He evolved twice, clinched plenty of wins, and did it all in style too. <laughs> Number 20, Horlucha. He may be part flying type, but this wrestling inspired partner definitely lived up to his fighting half too. After all, Ash didn't make it to the Lumios Conference Finals for nothing. Holucha soared through unfavorable type matchups and intense rivalries on his way to become one of his trainer's most reliable brawlers. Yeah. All right, Holucha, high jump Ta kick! More than that, this prideful Pokemon was also an excellent foil for Ash's own development throughout Kalos. So after the season dedicated plenty of time to their relationship, it's plain satisfying to see Holucha flying press Alun's Weavile into the last generation. Now, flying press! Ja! No need for a count out here, Horlucha is definitely the winner. Number 19, Surfetched. Much like Farfetched in the earlier seasons, Ash's Galarian partner didn't command much respect at first, but after honing both his leak and his skills, the regional variant evolved into quite the ringer. Surfetched. Its inaugural duel against Rinto's Gallade pretty much says it all. He's stronger, he's cooler, and he even gets a sick shield to go along with it. Given how long it took for the monster to spread its wings, it's beyond gratifying to watch it sharpen its blade in some of Ash's toughest battles ever. Not just anyone could have met Cynthia peck for peck, but clearly this long-awaited evolution was making up for lost time. Number 18, Torterra. With sunlight, water, and plenty of care, even a timid grass type can grow into a towering tree. Sometimes literally. Yep, Torterra held the weight of an actual oak on its back, which is an apt metaphor for how he basically carried Ash's Sinnoh adventures. Now, Torterra, use Leaf Storm! Terra! Not with the most victories or flashiest evolutions, but through some deeply rooted trainer bonding. There's no substitute for watching Ash and Titwig's relationship sprout over the course of hundreds of episodes. Suffice to say, that green thumb totally paid off, and the resulting Torterra even gave an Elite Four's ace a good thrashing. Though given the rich environment it grew in, it's hardly surprising. Leaf Storm! Go! Oh. 
A job well done. Number 17. Lapras For someone who wanted to be a Pokemon master, it took Ash until the Orange League to finally nab an Ice type. In his defense, he chose a pretty great one to start with. Lapras wasn't just another battler, it was basically the only reason Ash and the others could take on the Orange League at all. Its novel utility crafted an honest friendship between Pokemon and trainer that we'd never seen before. Though as Drake learned firsthand, Lapras could still shoot a water gun with the best of them. Lapras, water gun attack! Lapras hits its mark and that water gun is getting to Gengar! Ash eventually released it back to the sea, but if their first reunion is any indication, their bond won't be forgotten anytime soon. I didn't even recognize you. You really grew up, Lapras. Number 16, Rowlet. Rowlet? Are you saying you want to come with me? By the time Ash traveled to Alola, he'd developed quite the habit of befriending starter Pokemon. So catching Rowlet wasn't the surprising part. It was that the base stage bird absolutely ripped through every gym and rival in its path. At least when it wasn't falling asleep. It's asleep! <laughs> that record is an impressive calling card for any Pokemon, much less one that never evolved. Although since Rowlet pecked away at House Decidueye, Dash's partner clearly didn't need the boost. Plus, it meant the feathery friend stayed cute, wholesome, and optimistic until the very end. It speaks to the best part about Rowlet, that he's just as memorable out of battle as he is in it. Number 15. Gudra As Iris will attest, dragon types are notoriously difficult to train. That may be part of the reason Ash doesn't have very many, and that even fewer evolved under his tutelage. Until Gumi, that is. Quite frankly, Ash battling with a fully evolved dragon type was long overdue. So to prove it was worth the effort, Gudra delivered an astonishing array of hype moments and unforgettable battles. Even compared to Ash's utterly iconic Kalos lineup, this pseudo-legendary easily stole the show any time it stepped into the ring. Comparatively, Gudra wasn't around very long, but his undeniable impact meant his farewell still hit all the right notes. Take care, Gudra. Haruta. Ninja. Gudra. Number 14, Heracross. The only thing this Pokemon loves more than Ash is a good spoonful of sap. But even though it's easily distracted, Heracross still managed to focus up when it came to supporting its trainer. Heracross chose me! As they bonded over the years, Heracross's attention issues became less of a character flaw and more of a lovable quirk, especially since the bug type had the results to warrant a few charming gags. After all, this is a Mon that can tank a super effective fire blast and keep on swinging. Magmar is hit by the most powerful Pokemon attack! That's not even to mention the duel with Tobias either. Any Pokemon that will fight a Darkrai for you is definitely worth keeping around. Number 13, Squirtle. Ash may not have left Pallet Town with this water starter, but he still got his hands on one, and it came with its own sunglasses too. The Squirtle Squad captain wasn't just an integral part of the original run, it's arguably the water type out of all the ones that Ash has ever caught. Across Kanto and Johto, Squirtle's Skull Bash and Hydro Pump made quite the potent combination. Then, when it returned to help Ash conquer the battle frontier, these slick moves proved that training with the squad had totally paid off. Squirtle, Hydro Pump, let's go! All right, Sora, use Sideway! Sure, Ash has fished up more than his fair share of water types, but there's no forgetting your first. Number 12, Lycanroc. So let's do this! Lycanroc! Pseudos and starters be damned, this is the Pokemon that finally won Ash a regional league. It would be in the Hall of Fame even if it were a Rattata. 
The fact it's actually one of Ash's coolest aces to date is just the pokey block on top. After all, no one could have predicted that the overzealous Rockruff would evolve and garner a resume this impressive. But that's precisely why it's so poetic to see Lycanroc face off against its own midnight form in the Manalo Conference Finals. We're not done! Now use counter against counter! No way! This Pokemon is more than a fantastic addition to the team. It's a visual representation of why Ash deserved to beat Gladian. Number 11, Sceptile. For as powerful as it is in battle, Ash's Grovile was always the epitome of calm, cool, and collected. It served the trainer well across Hoenn, where the Pokemon's Leaf Blade cut up most of the region's gyms, and even a few league matches too. Its next form had a lot to live up to, but Ash's first fully evolved grass type didn't disappoint. Overheat, full blast! Major turn! Solar Beam, full blast! In fact, Sepdal never so much as hesitated, even when its opponents were Blaziken or Darkrai. That just reinforces its best quality, which is that even across multiple years and evolutions, Sepdal's never lost the cool factor that made him stand out in the first place. <laughs> Darkrai is unable to battle! Sceptile wins! I can't believe it! Number 10, Dragonite. This Pokemon may have been around since the very first generation, but Ash wasted no time catching it up to speed in the World Coronation series. Before it even got a chance to battle, Dragonite's capture already marked one of the sweetest recruitments since the early days. Whoa! Not so tight! Then Ash roared that friendship all the way to a win against Iris, who at that point was the champion of the Unova region. But really, that's just Dragon clawing the surface of its contributions. To put it into perspective, Dragonite was a part of every single one of Ash's rank up fights in the entire World Coronation series. <laughs> Clearly, the two dragon rushed a few steps and went straight to unbreakable companions. Number 9, Bulbasaur. It bears the seed of a plant on its back from birth. The seed slowly develops. Researchers are unsure whether to classify Bulbasaur as a plant or animal. If you don't count Pikachu, this seedling Pokemon was the first starter Ash ever caught. Naturally, it means that Bulbasaur is about as strong as an ordinary trainer's ace, and then some. Just to prove it, the grass type slapped its vine whip in some of the series' best moments. Not just in Kanto either. After one look at its solar beam in action, it's clear why Bulbasaur has one of the longest tenures on Ash's team ever. Sure, it's a bit small in stature, but the bulb on its back ensures that it doesn't wilt in the ring. Instead, Bulbasaur laid roots with Ash and grew into a downright legendary teammate. Number 8, Incineroar. Something about Ash's fire types always ignites the series' best qualities, and Litten was no exception. The fiery feline had plenty of time throughout Alola to organically grow into a prideful Tauracat. From there, the evolved starters set fire to most of Kukui's team during their exhibition match. As a matter of fact, the only thing that seemed a match for it was its own evolution in Cineroar. But Tauracat overcame that too, and then evolved into Incineroar itself, just for good measure. Amazing! With its victory, Tauracat evolved! Incineroar, that's awesome! Let's keep going! <laughs> sure, a well-earned evolution never hurts, but the best part is that Incineroar didn't need it to secure the win. Evidently, it already held a flamethrower to Ash's other fire types. Number 7, Gengar. Ghost types often get a bad rap, but the Pallet Town Prodigy has always seen the very best in Pokemon. So when Ash showed Gengar the kindness it desperately needed, the mischievous Mon returned the favor in ginormous fashion. And that's no hyperbole. Gengar! <laughs> Oh, that's that.
On principle, a Gigantamax Pokemon is plenty cool, but it's especially fitting given the high stakes of the World Coronation series. Honestly, it's surprising Gengar earned a spot on Ash's team at all, let alone became a star player. But in retrospect, it's only natural Ash would circle back to his native region for a last minute addition. <laughs> Now just imagine if he'd kept that Haunter from way back when. Number 6. Snorlax There is no other Pokemon in the entire Dex quite like this, though that's for the best. Ash may have caught it while it snored, but there's nothing lax about what happens when it steps into the battlefield. Now Snorlax, use your Ice Punch! On the contrary, this behemoth has a habit of going on absolute tears through enemy teams. There's not a single Pokemon who wants to be on the wrong end of Snorlax's Hyper Beam, and that's putting it lightly. Snorlax has beaten two of Gary's Pokemon, leaving both trainers with three remaining. How did Snorlax get so fast? Thankfully, its penchant for knockouts doesn't overshadow one of the most lovable personalities of any Pokemon Ash has ever caught. Just look at that smile. Truly, the snoring partner just can't be beat in sleeping, combat, or sheer optimism. Number 5. Infernape For the most part, Ash's Pokemon serve as complements to his own growth as a trainer, but that just makes it all the more worthwhile when one comes around and incinerates the usual routine. Chimchar doesn't just have the best character arc of any of Ash's Pokemon, it has one of the greatest in the whole franchise, period. Monferno controlled Blaze, and it turned it into a new power. From an abandoned Chimchar into a trusting Monferno, all the way to a roaring Infernape. Watching the abandoned fire type prove Paul wrong is simply Pokemon at its best. It all culminates in one of the most hyped league matches ever. Not for the action, but because it ends Infernape's journey in a real blaze of glory. Number 4. Lucario Every step of the way, Ash has had to earn his Aura Pokemon strength, first as an Egg, then as a Riolu, and finally as a fully evolved Lucario. But it didn't end there either. No, they got started mastering Mega Evolution. With so much love and effort poured into their relationship, it's no surprise the new form is more than an average sword stance. Instead, Ash's first Mega was an evolution for both the Pokemon and the partner. <laughs> the whole storyline works because it's not just an excuse for more action. It's simply a result of Ash doing what Ash does best. He's not a Pokemon master for nothing, after all. Number 3. Greninja To this day, Ash's Kalos team ranks among his very best. Although that's not entirely accurate to say, since most of its success lies on the shoulders of a certain water starter. Stronger and stronger! Here goes! On their own, Froakie's evolutions are as satisfying as they come, but for the first time, Ash took his bond with Greninja a step further than that. Instead of trainer and Pokemon, they were true partners in a way no one had ever been before. In that regard, the evolution of Ash Greninja marked a perfect encapsulation of everything the series had been building to. Of course, it didn't hurt that the new form put up some absolutely insane fights. At least Alan certainly thinks so. <laughs> Number 2. Charizard In what should have been a celebration of Ash's skills, Charmeleon's evolution only led to some serious moodiness and a crushing loss at the Indigo League. But the Ashes of Defeat soon burned into one of Pokemon's greatest storylines. Ash isn't just given Charizard's respect, 
he genuinely earns it over the course of a long and arduous character arc. Seismic dog with everything you got! Charizard is going to try Seismic Toss once again! Blastoise! As a result, their combined victory over Gary's Blastoise is as much a win for their relationship as it is for the Silver Conference. Nowadays, the Kanto Fire-type is well-regarded as one of Ash's most powerful companions, but only because of all the hard work it took to get there. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pikachu All it took was one Thundershock and just like that, a generation-defining partnership sparked to life. With it, the show announced that even among the battles, badges, and rivals to come, it would always be about Ash and Pikachu. Pikachu. Its name is Pikachu. Oh, it's so cute, it's the best of all! Over 25 years and a thousand episodes later, it's never lost sight of that. They've been together through quite literally everything. The exhilarating wins and the crushing defeats to the clutch captures and tearful farewells. It's no coincidence that, when it came down to it, every single one of Ash's Pokemon believed in Pikachu to win it for them all. Ash and Pikachu's bond is the one constant in the series, and quite frankly, it's all Pokemon ever needs. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.